Star Wars 7x7 episode 2928. It's Spinner Sunday, or at least when Sunday happens, it's often a Spinner Sunday here on Star Wars 7x7, and today we're going to talk about the third of four galactic tales in Star Wars Insider that celebrate the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. This one features Dexter Jetster, and it's called Inheritance, and it has ties to an entirely different era of Star Wars storytelling. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So, Inheritance is the third of four stories from Star Wars Insider Magazine that celebrates the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones and is also taking place in a window during which we are in between phases of the High Republic mega ginormous storytelling initiative, right? So phase one ended earlier this year, phase two begins later this year and in the meantime while we are waiting they are doing this very you know, well timed and executed situation with the 20th anniversary Attack of the Clones stories featuring characters from that movie and Dexter Jetster of Dex's Diner is the main character in this one. Now the story while it is self-contained also raises a lot of questions about things outside of this story and that may be due to the fact that the writer George Mann is also now a part of the whole High Republic storytelling initiative because it has direct ties to the High Republic and particularly to Phase 2. And the story brought me back to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim and the High Republic panel there because they had a couple of reveals about Phase 2, about elements of phase two and we have our first mentions of them in storytelling in this particular story. One of those things has to do with Pathfinder teams that were going out and exploring the Outer Rim and another has to do with communications teams or comms teams because they didn't have the communications network up and running in the time of phase one of the High Republic as they you know did in phase two which takes place 150 years earlier so they had to use these communication systems in these communications droids that they you know they made an analogy and said it's kind of like the Pony Express where they just kind of had to send them off and do <laughs> sort of relay segments to get any communications out to farther distances. Now one of these droids, the EEEX droid, is key to this story. In fact, it is the inheritance that is referred to in the title of this particular story. This droid is supposed to be the key to a treasure on a planet called Sheratam in the Arath system. And these, by the way, are brand new. They don't appear in Wikipedia in Legends stuff and I checked the Essential Atlas and they don't show up in there so this is a new system and a new planet that have been identified in the story. Ultimately though that Pathfinder team was killed by pirates in some sort of altercation and the only thing that remained of you know the family for the inheritance for this character Servant that comes to Dex for help is this EX droid which then Dex is able to kind of poke around at and make it boot up and he's able to get a communication recorded out of the device. I think that was the only thing actually that felt a little bit off to me, the fact that this droid, which was, you know, very beat up and very old, that it still had battery power in it so that way it could boot up and be able to display a communication thing. Yeah, that was the only Thing that you know was a kind of a nagging detail for me but the recording features a Jedi named Sturm Umbrick and he's very excited about the fact that their expedition found a statue that appears to be millennia old and it proves that there was a sentient species at some time on this planet Sharatam and so in the vein of Daniel Jose Older saying everything is something in, at least in his High Republic storytelling, you do wonder if this is a preview of a story that we're going to see in phase two of the High Republic. And I've been wondering if one of the Jedi that's pictured in the Pathfinder concept art that was shared at the High Republic panel is actually this Sturm Umbrick character. Don't know, probably not. Ooh, I mean, you know, probably not, but who knows, maybe. 
And this is the sort of thing that I mean about how the story raises more questions or so many questions, even while telling a very self-contained story, which is just that this character servant has this droid and needs Dex's help figuring out what it is and why it's valuable. But unfortunately, servant has also asked a couple of the wrong people that question and they want to take it away from him. And so Dex has to help him out in this situation and does naturally. Along the way, we actually learn a little bit more about Dex. So he was also a prospector on hyperspace routes and I think this is going to be a situation where maybe we learn a little bit more about Basilisks, who, you know, that's the species that Dex is. And according to legends, they only live about 75-ish years, maybe a little bit more. So more or less like a human lifespan. But for him to be doing that, I mean, it seems like he needs to be older by the time we meet him in the prequel trilogy because he would be at, you know, uh, I guess that would be 22 BBY when we meet him in Attack of the Clones. And that means that if he was at toward the end of his life, he would have been born in 100 BBY. So he would have been barely old enough to be, you know, seeing the end of the High Republic era in 82 BBY. If he is old, however, he has not lost a step because there is an action sequence where he's deflecting blaster fire with frying pans and his skill at it is basically Jedi level for all intents and purposes. But that's one of the best parts of this story. Dex has always been a compelling character from the moment that he walked on screen in Attack of the Clones. And this has been a great year for Dex because he also got a you know, featured role in the novel Brotherhood by Mike Chen. And we learn a lot a bit about, a, lo a lot a bit, a lot about him <laughs> and about his relationship with Obi-Wan Kenobi and now getting him in this story too. So yeah, I think he's a really compelling character and George Mann definitely adds Adds to his mythos with this story. So yes to Lucasfilm, yes we want more Dexter Jetster content. We're digging it, we like it, we want more of it. Thank you so much for it. And also, great job with the story George Mann, excellent, thank you very much. And we'll have to keep an eye on this one when phase two of the High Republic starts and see if any of the seeds that were sown in here end up bearing fruit in those new stories. But for now that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast and it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.